Hummer. I am the Hummer. <laughs> hmm. Beware. Skelton, 502. <laughs> Skelton, 502, take one. presents this program in color. From Television City in Hollywood. The Red Skelton Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You have to pardon the way I look. I was coming down the hall, and some guy grabbed me, told me his name, and shoved a bag of potato chips down my throat. <laughs> <laughs> now you pardon me while I comb my hair, see? I'm gonna do it while I can. It ain't gonna be long, boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> you know, years ago, I used to have very long hair. It was a long wave, see? Then it got to be a short wave, and now the tide's slowly going out. <laughs> Uh, did I get it? Huh? Yeah. yeah, always like to put an alley in the old block, you know. <laughs> Something over this, that little alley is slowly becoming a parking lot. <laughs> I said to my wife, Little Red, I said, uh, hey, our show's gonna be in color, and I'm dying to be in color. She says, well, you're a hair, you better start dying. <laughs> this is just natural color, though, so help me, Hannah. <laughs> No, uh, I, the, the makeup department wanted me to go down today and have my skull dyed. <laughs> hey, anybody here from Texas? Huh? Anyone from Texas? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Speak right up. You from Texas? Huh? Yeah, yeah. You can always tell a Texan. Not much, but you can tell. <laughs> Boy, there's a place to visit if you've never been to Texas before. You name it, they ain't got it. You name it, they ain't got it. You didn't need it no how. <laughs> Down there, they got miles and miles of nothing but miles and miles. <laughs> Everything's space down there. That's why those astronauts from Houston go up into space and they say to each other, what's new? <laughs> for three days, I was driving, see, for three days. And finally, my wife says, where on earth are we? I says, I don't know. She says, what's that? I says, the horizon. She says, well, head for that. It's better than nothing. <laughs> Finally, we came to one little tree. One little tree, and my dog rubbed his eyes. He thought it was a mirage. <laughs> Everything's big down there. I saw a flea with four dogs on him. 
And I got my first traffic ticket down. I got a, tra a ticket for speeding, see? I'm, spe I'm driving. Now, th there's nothing. Just an open road. I don't see nothing. There ain't nothing. I don't see nothing, see? Then all of a sudden, I see him. <laughs> One great big red light. <laughs> Looks like Dean Martin winking. <laughs> Oh, and was this officer mad? He came over to my car, opened the door, threw it away. <laughs> Great big bruiser, muscles, you know, and needed a shave, and you should have seen the fellow with her. <laughs> I said, Ranger? I wanted to win him over. See, I said, Ranger? I was going pretty fast. I said, I got a tiger in my tank. <laughs> he said, you got a jackass behind a wheel. <laughs> According to this license, you should be wearing glasses. I said, I got contacts. He said, I don't care who you know. You're supposed to. <laughs> hey, I heard two Texans talking. One of them says, uh, do you believe in Buddha? And the other one says, yeah, I believe in Buddha. But I like margarine just as well. <laughs> when people go to Texas or they come out west here, and, and they get around with, uh, like, with the Texans, for instance. Everybody wants them to believe that they're Texans, too. So they get themselves in one of those big 10-gallon hats for their five-gallon heads, see? And the, <laughs> now, with that in mind, I'd like to show you a typical guy from the East going down to Texas. And to make everybody believe he's a cowboy, he rides a horse for the first time and does everything that the cowboys do. Here, let me have this. Here, here we go, down to Texas. <laughs>
like pussycat. You're delicious, and if my wishes can all come true, I'll soon be kissing your sweet little pussycat lips. Meow! Meow! Red Skelton and Paul Ford in How Stupid of Cupid. <laughs> I'm sure proud of our boy Clem for graduating from college. Well, that's not too bad for a boy who was 18 before he could wave bye-bye. <laughs>
Mr. Petalflesh, Quincy is here again. Oh, no, the world's lousiest ventriloquist. Introducing Quincy Quirilix and Prunella. Quincy, Quincy, your lips move more than that wooden dummy's. I never complained about it in radio. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> I've got some hilarious new material. Now watch this. Uh, tell me, Prunella, where are you living in New York? On the corner of Hickory and Dickory. <laughs> Hickory and Dickory? Where's that? Down, Down by, by the dock! <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing personal, Quibblet, but we've run out of English-speaking countries for you to work in. Well, well, will you hear the one about the nearsighted beetle who married his own brother? <laughs> Not now. I've got to mail a letter. Oh, uh, uh, may, uh, sir, uh, may I lick the stamp? Why? He hasn't had a thing to eat all day. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Now, now, you wait here for now. Did you hear this one? Uh, did you hear about the horse that played the piano? <laughs> well, now, over again. Now, well, let's see. First, snap on the safety belt. I knew I forgot something. <laughs> safety belt. There we are. <laughs> well, how do you like that? Somebody stole the building. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, well, there we are. Oh, gee. <laughs> Boy, I'm stupid even when they don't write it that way. Oh, <laughs> uh, here we go now. While cleaning everything from this window pane. One thing I despise, long before it dries, soap gets in my eye. <laughs> Farewell, Prunella. I've decided to do something with my life. End it. I'm going to kill myself. If I jump fast, I can make the first edition of Variety. <laughs> you, ah! you soaked my face. Well, thank heavens, I thought the window had nostrils. You got soap in my eyes, stupid. Well, I had to do it, stupid. There's no smart way to get soap in your eyes. <laughs> I'm even a failure at suicide. Even if I jumped out the window, I'd fall up. <laughs> Here, let me help you out there, old buddy. Yeah, there you are, old buddy, there, old buddy. Haven't you got a ride? Yes, old buddy. There you are, old buddy, buddy, buddy. I, old buddy, I heard that on Gilligan's Island. <laughs> old buddy, there you are. There you are. Now that I got your windshield wiped off, would you like for me to check under the hood? No, thanks. How about checking your gas? From the looks on your face, you got some. <laughs> Some, I've got enough to fly to Pittsburgh. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm going in and dry my upper lip before it shrinks. Oh. Uh, and leaves me with a permanent puck. <laughs> Nothing like a stiff upper lip. Now <laughs> well, I'll get rid of this water and start out. <laughs> well, who plugged up my bucket? <laughs> Somebody plugged up my bucket. <laughs> Why did they plug up my book? <laughs> How do you like that? They even picked the water. They picked my water. There's a water picker around here. <laughs> well, I knew there was a water shortage in New York, but I didn't think they'd mug you for it. <laughs> you know that water shortage is so bad here in New York? Why, when you turn off the faucets, they go... <laughs> <laughs> if one don't work, I always got a little gym handy, you know. <laughs> good heavens, good heavens. Oh, I've drowned a lady. Please say something, lady, even if it's only glove, glove. <laughs> Get over here, my dear lady. I didn't mean to drown you like that. Oh, good heavens. I want... Boy, you sure twisted yourself around, didn't you? <laughs> Boy, he's a skinny broad, isn't he? 
Oh, boy, some hog jaws that fatten you up, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, I wonder if she's still breathing. <laughs> well, there must be a way to do this to still get past Pasadena. <laughs> I don't mean to be disrespectful, ma'am, but... Uh, Her heart's dead. <laughs> Maybe I could save her by mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. <laughs> oh, I had a good one there. <laughs> well, I don't know her very well. <laughs> I'll have to use just one lip. <laughs> Why, that's the first time I've ever touched my lips on a girl's lips. I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm in love with the water love girl. <laughs> from an overdose of Lawrence Welk. <laughs> hey, I'll take some of these home for Christmas. <laughs> I bet Lawrence would buy some of these. They're all hard to get. <laughs> well, I've made a fortune here. <laughs> well, I'll be on Ed Sullivan's show in no time. <laughs> well, that ought to be enough. Why, they melt in your mouth. I'll get indigestion. <laughs> they make you mad. I'm beginning to foam at the mouth. <laughs> well, I would marry you, little drowned lady. But what about the children? People don't like soggy kids, you know. <laughs> I love you. Take your hands off her now. She's mine. What do you mean she's yours? I was going to make her that little lady there. My, uh, uh Mrs. Uh, Kadiddlehopper. Mrs. Kadiddlehopper? Yes. Uh, nobody know. marries a dummy. Well, you didn't have to tell her that. <laughs> Let her find it out for herself on the honeymoon like other wives do. That's the best argument I've ever seen for Planned Parenthood. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the way it goes, you know. It's a case of having love and loss. I love Penella, and she lost $500. $500? Yeah. <laughs> that's what my pa was going to... I promised the girl that I married $500. That includes tax, marriage license, and she gets it right after she goes through escrow. <laughs> I love you. To think my Paul wanted me to marry one of my own kind. I'm glad I held out for a girl. <laughs> I detest long engagements. Mm -hmm. I now pronounce you man and wife. Give me the $500 in time to get out of the building. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got a personal question to ask you. Uh, if we go on a honeymoon, are you going with us? Of course. Well, that's good. I'll have somebody to talk to. <laughs> yeah. Now, we'll get married right away. Yeah, some marriage. Uh, he has to have a blood test, and she needs a termite inspection. <laughs> there was another thing about the children. Will uh, you have them, or will I? Let's not break with tradition. The wife will have the children. Good, because I'll be so busy washing windows that I won't have time to sit on the eight. <laughs> Ma, Ma, you know Clem's been washing windows in the big city for nigh under three weeks, and we ain't heard nary a word. Well, uh, Pa, you don't suppose our little boy fell out of one of them tall buildings? No, no, no. We would have heard about that. Good news travel fast. <laughs> I am home again. And, Ma, I brought you something. The more dirty laundry. <laughs> oh, that poor old girl just can't stand on her own feet, can she? Clam. Ma, I have an announcement to make. <laughs> yes. I'm in love. My heart's on fire. 
And I got some feet to match. <laughs> Boys, they're on the burning dick, and I better get over here Please. before my corn start popping. Please, sit down. Huh? I said sit down. Okay, there we go. <laughs> hey, that must be hot soup because I'm too old for diaper, right? <laughs> I didn't mean for you to sit in there. Oh, I'm in love. You are? I don't know what I'm Graham, doing. Graham. Yeah. I think you got something you want to tell us. I think so. You folks are going to have to build a little house behind the little house that's behind the big house. <laughs> because I'm getting married. To a girl? A girl what? <laughs> a girl, girl. A lady, a woman. Oh, she's... Oh, I tell you folks. Clam, <laughs> hmm? Clam, you're shying us right out of our furniture. Oh. <laughs> I did can't. Clam Cadiddlehopper. Yes. Pick her up. No, sir. I don't have nothing to do with fallen women. <laughs> Seven, four hundred and ninety-eight. Believe me, Mr. Kiddle Hopper, your son's getting a fine bride. Uh, just one thing. I suggest they don't honeymoon in Niagara Falls. The spray is likely to make her a warp. <laughs> four hundred and ninety-nine. Five hundred. Thank you. Is it all there? Oh, yes. Go Good. On. You'll get it at the ceremony after Clem kisses the bride. Well, the bride's all ready. I've already sandpapered her lips. <laughs> All right, boy, I don't want to get married. I tell you, I'm scared. I don't drag me in anymore. I don't want to get into this house. I owe it to the world not to bring any more kids into it like me. What happened? Chapped lips? No, splinters. <laughs> I've been kissing my girl. Clem, yeah. Clem, you know something? What? We've never met her. You haven't? No. There's a picture. Which is kind of little. Yeah. Well, she's a shrimp. He's a shrimp, but she's solid, boy. And here it comes, folks, a real gym. <laughs> she's a shrimp, but she's solid, and that's what I like, shrimp solid. <laughs> You're just having premarital jitters. Premarital jitters? I thought that was illegal. <laughs> Prunella requires very little upkeep. Oh? All you have to do is spray her during caterpillar season. Well, that's nice to know. They say a family that sprays together will stay together. Well, I'll go get the bride. Yes, all right. Uh, uh, now, remember, uh, uh, she easily gets angry, you know. Oh, well, I won't rub her the wrong way. Oh, that's all right. But uh, don't rub against the grain. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, that girl is oak with me. She's oak with me. Hey, Clem, I'm Justice of the Peace. I'm here for the wedding. Did you well, get a license? I got a license right there. It is. There's the license. Well, this is a fishing license. Well, I got hooked, didn't I? <laughs> Everybody's getting hooked these days. <laughs> I see that Frank Sinatra may get married. That'll make a nice marriage. Nice little Italian family with all the kids yelling, Mamma Mia! <laughs> Will the orchestra please start the wedding march? All right. My favorite song, Ramona. <laughs> Oh, they don't write music the way they used to. They write it the way they used to. They just don't play it like they used to. <laughs> there she is. Oh, isn't she beautiful when she's gift wrapped? Clam, <laughs> yeah. she is kind of short. Yeah. Her feet don't even touch the floor. <laughs> Naturally, she's so happy she's walking on air. <laughs> well, around here, that's an advantage. She can cross the pasture with a certain amount of confidence. <laughs> the gophers won't nip at her heel. Now, do you take this whatever he is as your, as your husband? I do. I want to hear it from her lips, not from yours. Yeah. If you could hear it from her lips, I'd be playing the palace. <laughs> I like that. That's a goodie, boy. That's a good. See them little gyms you save like that? That's a goodie. Can we get on with it? Yes. That, that 500 bucks could be drawing interest now. Uh -huh. 
Clem, do you take Prunella to be your lawful wedded wife, forsaking all other women? Well, this sure ain't married Italian style, I'll tell you that. <laughs> what do you want for 500 bucks, Sophia Loren? <laughs> <laughs> the palace, I like that. <laughs> Yes, sir. Take the bride's hand, Clem. Okay. <laughs> Good heavens. Why, this is unusual. I thought when you took the bride's hand, the rest of her came with it. That old injury. Uh, uh, she got it bowling, and she forgot to let go of the ball. <laughs> Good heavens. I forgot to tie a knot in her navel. <laughs> Listen, son, it ain't no laughing matter. Her well, legs just fell off. Well, some girls just ain't neat. <laughs> you don't understand, Clem. What's the matter? She, she is, she is a pony. Believe me. Well, under the circumstances, I'll take half the dowry. Well, well, here's a new one for you. Uh, usually the bride don't fall apart until after the wedding. <laughs> How about that? I got the part that eats. <laughs> oh, well, so it won't be a total ass loss. <laughs> I'll take you down to the palace. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like you to meet our guest star for tonight, the very talented and wonderful Mr. Paul Ford. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Say, I understand that you just finished making a movie called Never Too Late. That's right, Ram. Yeah. It's about a man in his middle 50s who becomes a father. Isn't uh, that amazing? Well, it'd be more amazing if he became a mother. <laughs> <laughs> is it a comedy? No. Becoming a father at my age is more science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're never too old for some things, you know. Look at Frank Sinatra. At his age, he can still sail a boat. <laughs> Speaking of pictures, uh, just last night I saw you in your new picture. What you say? Those magnificent men in their flying machines. Oh, yeah. You, you like the picture, huh? Yeah. Well, open your mouth for a second, will you? I want to see if you really liked it. Yeah, I guess you really did. <laughs> How can you tell if I liked it by opening my mouth? Well, you didn't walk out to the lobby. There's no popcorn sticking between your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, Reds, uh, I'd better hurry home. Oh. I have a nervous dog there who won't eat a thing unless I'm there. Oh, what does your dog eat? Me. Uh, <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, our musical guest for tonight is Freddie and the Dreamers, one of England's most unusual singing groups. Now, they wear nice, clean tuxedos. I told you they were unusual. <laughs> of course, now, they don't wear the tuxedos because they're bugs on neatness or they're snobs or anything like that. It's just that... There are so many singing groups coming out of England now these days that Britain is suffering from a tremendous shortage of dirty sweatshirts. <laughs> Here they are, the thing is singing and recording stars, Freddie, then the Dreamers. <laughs> i 
There's nothing like a long summer vacation to bring out the natural hostility between a man and his wife. We now present Red Skelton in The Silent Spot, 
home from the vacation.
go away. Red will be back in a minute. Here he is again, Red Skelton. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of our sponsors and staff, we sincerely hope that we've brought you one second of happiness into your home. It's certainly been one hour of happiness for us. So until next week, I'll say goodbye for now, and may God bless. Good night. <laughs> When there'll be more Comedy walk to war So goodbye Until the moment when We'll see you all again To our friends near and far Fare thee well Au revoir <laughs> This is our Gilmore speaking.